And welcome back, guys. So, I'm over here playing Rust. I got all my electrical set up. I've got the pumps set up so I can just turn them off or I can turn them on. This way it helps not lag the server by leaving them on. Even just leaving them powered and not even having them running can cause lag. So, by having it so I can just turn them off like that prevents lag when you're not using the facility. Anyways, so right now I'm getting ready to make... I believe I'm about to make... Uh, basic max health tea, and about to make pure healing teas, which requires red berries and yellow berries. Or you have the yellow ones. But why am I doing this wipe, you ask? Well, this wipe, I'm experimenting with the building designs for next wipe, because next wipe I might do an RP town, or maybe I'll just do join one of those RP villages. Uh, what's the difference between RV village? an RV, RP town. RP village is a bunch of plop bases that are uniquely placed and sometimes just look really cool or sometimes it just looks like really shit. Uh, RP towns usually have nice clean looking ro roads. They're not perfect like yeah, as you can see here there's a, you know, a little line here. But you know, usually they're built on flat land and occasionally will have little gaps, but for the most part, all you see is stone or, you know, you don't see grass between buildings. You just literally see a more advanced version of a town. That's all you really see. And they're expensive, by the way, for, ma for maintaining. Which is when saying it's got five days. And I go, hmm. I probably should fix that. We should probably put like eight days in there. So why am I doing this wipe? Well, right now I'm getting blueprints. I've got this all in auto. I, I drop anything in that box, it automatically sorts it for me. Uh, except for wood. I haven't figured out how to separate the two systems yet. Because... When I dump ore in there, I've dumped three boxes of ore in it last night. I had like a box of sulfur, and the other two boxes were all metal. So of course I smelt the sulfur first. It takes four hours to smelt that. Of course I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna wait where I'm for four hours. I'm gonna go do something else. Come back four hours. It's done. It's already eaten a box of wood. <laughs> Dump the middle in there. Oh, it says it'll be done in 18 hours. Yeah, I remember there's stacks. So. And now, to fill the furnace up, it'll say it'll be done in two, three hours. But when it's stacked and capped off, it just means anything that furnace saying it's going to take to cook all that, and then times it by how many stacks of metal you have. It took about 18 hours to smelt two boxes of metal ore. That's got 5,000 stacks on them. It's like, uh, okay. I guess I'll just go, I'll go ahead and load these up on the auto smelter and walk away. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I'm doing this wipe right now, is getting all my blueprints unlocked. This way I'll be set to go for next wipe. Uh, sometimes I'll leave this going at night and it'll automatically make me uh, gunpowder which I have it linked from the sulfur box here. As you can see, it's pretty full. It looks like I need to go out and refill it. And it's just automatically grabbing charcoal from here, brings it over here. It gets pushed through that conveyor, gets pushed through here, makes some gunpowder, then it gets brought up here, gets brought over here, goes through that conveyor, gets pushed through here, and it makes it flow. And then the goal here after this makes enough explo, is I will get a I'll get a skill perk in here. I'm gonna be resetting my skill tree because I don't like this feature right here. Uh, it gives you a chance to instantly mine a node, but if I get rid of this, I can go back to the way it was before and. If I don't instantly mine a node, there's a chance for that node respawning, therefore I get more stuff out of it. But, if I go over here to build craft, uh, this gives you the chance per level of receiving your components back. 
right? This is the one I want to get. This gives you the chance per level of duplicating the item while crafting. So basically, once I get this skill right here, or this one, I prefer this one because this is going to allow me, let's say I'm going to go make rockets. It'll give me a chance of duplicating rockets. Oh my god, just this perk right here on the skill tree. So that's what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to reset my skill tree. I'm going to get those two points. I'm going to use it to get this eventually because you have to get five in each one of these. So that's where I'm going with that. And then I'll make a bunch of rockets, sell them, or use them. I haven't decided which yet. And I got my horse farm over there. I made it bigger than I usually do. Usually I'll make it six triangles in the middle and then I'll do squares outwards. I did it two squares out this time. It's not going to work as it's supposed to be design-wise, but you see these sweet gold nuggets here? This is what we need to make fertilizer. Why is fertilizer important? Fertilizer is important because you can either sell it, or you can make, out of the horse poop -poo, fertilizer. Which you can stick in here. And then we can use this fertilizer either to sell, or it can stick it in the planter and make the plants grow a lot faster. So with these lovely plants we see here, these will take 1 hour and 15 minutes. Because 1, they're God's clones. 2, they have plenty of water. They're happy. You know, they're 100% light, 100% water, 100% temperature. Now if we had the ground at 100%, it'd probably only take an hour to have these grow. But it's going to take an hour and 15 minutes. So... That's pretty much what's going on here, is at this point, I'm getting my teas out there, having people buy them, I have to replenish them. And it's just a nice break from playing Cyberpunk 2077. It's a nice break from playing, uh, what do you want to call it? You know, playing the other series that we usually do. It's just a nice break, in general. Uh, over here, experimenting with some base designs. I was thinking about turning this into like a cloth slash, you know, this is where you can buy food from place. Over here I'm experimenting with a house design. I would charge a lot more for these. It's a 6x6 six six in the interior core. And it's technically an 8. 8x6 eight if you include the porches. And I just want to, I wanted a roof that came down from the porch so it actually looked like a house and this is what it turned out to be. It looks like this. I don't know. I kind of like it. I kind of don't. I think I might go back to my uh, either 3x3 three three house where the roofs go upwards because it just looks better. Or maybe I'll go back to the 2x3 because it's just smaller and looks better and you can get more of it. Now, the problem with building these RP towns is you go for all this work to build the RP town, and you only get, like, one or two people that buy a house from at you, or buy a house to live here, and that's not very enjoyable. I, I just make the RP town at this point because I'm bored and I have too many resources laying around. <laughs> what happens if you have too many resources laying around? It lags. What happens when you have too many boxes and it's just filled with stone or wood or ore? It lags, right? Too much shit in one spot. So, why don't you just build out of it, right? So that's why I did. I just built out of it. And it's kind of enjoyable to hide under here when the chopper comes by. Kind of treat this like a sewer system, I guess. Looks at me. Wait a minute. This has a sewer system? Well, it might as well be considered a sewer system. But yeah, pretty much, in order to line these up perfectly, you gotta go out eight blocks that way, foundations that way, and then you come back with triangles, and then that last triangle, you put a square, and then you remove the square, and it depends on how the level of the terrain is. So, for instance, here I would have to 
put a foundation down, put a half wall up, and then do a roof or a floor. And that's how you get things so close together. But yeah, I wanted to give you guys a heads up of what I'm up to. I just needed a small break from playing the other games. And that's pretty much what's going on with that. Make sure to hit the like button, make sure to subscribe button. I just wanted to give you an eye opener of hmm, why didn't you got why didn't you play Cyberpunk tonight or some other game or some other series you're supposed to be working on tonight. Eh. I needed a break. <laughs> Anyways, make sure to hit the like button, make sure to subscribe button. Uh, I probably won't add on too much of this, but if I do, I'm probably doing it out of being really bored. Uh, you should definitely come join the Alliance Game 2X PvP skill loot server. They're currently working on adding new plugs to make it more enjoyable to play this server, and it's looking for community feedback on how to make their server more interesting, or better if you want to call it that. Um, due to this recent update, all the plugs that they wanted to add ended up breaking, apparently. Uh, apparently, the plugs that they wanted to add, they wanted to add, like, the electrical grid where you could, you know, climb up the pole, put electrical fuse in, and actually have you run power line from the electrical pole to your house, or to your base, if you want to call it that way. And apparently that plug broke, and that's why they did not input it in this wipe slash server update because the face punch studios that are the people that created rust decided to break the crap out of the game to a certain point so yeah yeah it's always fun right <laughs> anyways make sure to like button make sure to subscribe button definitely come check out alliance games uh definitely nice and relaxing fairly friendly people um if you're looking for a pvp you know go to the pvp zones Anyways, I'll see you guys again soon. Make sure to hit the like button, make sure to subscribe button, and I'll see you again in the next video.